And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when they had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. You know, the whole Barabbas thing, the zealots, um, that's who they killed. You know, that's basically code for a zealot. You know, zealots, uh, I mean, before we had the word zealot, but, you know, the um, insurrectionists. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Yashral, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sepakthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which isn't a correct rendition of the saying either way, but that is not an appropriate, somebody who's not even a believer is going to say that. Um, how can you say that this is a Messiah, the uh, a prophet that God would have called that would have done this sort of thing? But Alhi, Alhi, Lamah, Fletchthanu, my God, my God, why have you forgiven me? And there's some other ones that don't sound as bad here. Um, more realistic. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Eliyahu. And straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar. You know, it, it had opium. Um, and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be. Let us see whether Eliyahu will come to save him. Yeah, the, you know, twisting the words there. Jesus 
When he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and, behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Again, they may have not meant the Son part is like literally being the child of God, but it's it, it was a way of speaking. I'm getting rumbling the tumbly here. Oh, for me to eat after this. Um, and many women were there beholding far off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arabatha, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now, the next day followed the day of the preparation. The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that. The deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way and make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchral sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. The resurrection of Jesus. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of God as a noun and verb descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Different Lord than the other there, you know, spiritual master. Um, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. No. Sometimes we have the reference worshipped, and we they weren't really taking him as God. They were like, oh, we love you and all that. Um, we're glad to see you back and whatnot. That's that's probably what happened. Because um, they, they know what he taught. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests, all the things that were done, and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money 
unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this thing is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. The eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain, where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has, you know, their reference to eleven witnesses. Um, there were some issues with what the eight of those witnesses said afterwards. I mean, there was a list of three and a list of eight, but... Um, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, Buddhism kind of has the same thing. You, you know, the refuge of the, the Buddha, the teachings in the community. So the community here would be the Holy Ghost and the teachings, the Son and, you know, the Buddha, the Father. But um, this whole Trinity thing, it's, it's um, you know, as you can tell, it's an add-on to the story. Jesus isn't uh, saying to worship all three, didn't this same book, Matthew, teach you not to do anything in his name? Um, in his cause, perhaps, you know. Um, and the whole death, resurrection, ascension bit was not um, part of any of the 80 BCE to, um, you know, the 30s. Or even the 40s. Of the, it wasn't until Paul, till these were inserted into the story. And there's no indication that anybody connected the typical Mithric savior myth um, to the whole Jesus story until Pauline Christianity.